welcome back to the Valencia Property Podcast. October has been an extremely busy month for us and we've been able to get a lot of sales over the line for our clients and we've actually started November in the same way. This week I think we've made five sales which is really good, although two of them are still in that bit where we've made the offer, it's been accepted and then we'll see. It's funny that though, we're saying that every month it just continues to be really really busy. We've been at the notary's office a lot for a lot of flats in the city, houses around the region and lots and lots of powers of attorney for future clients for Valencia Property. We've been doing NIA applications and more. The weather's been keeping us entertained as threats of storms receded and we got a few drops, but nothing biblical. Yet, and then Storm Kieran, was it Kieran or something like that, came and it kept us a bit blowy for a few days. We didn't get any rain from that either. And then there was another storm and it stayed windy. As usual, we start the month by telling you about what we've been producing on the blog, and as usual, the show notes will have the links to all of the posts we mention here. We started the month talking about rental options in the Valencia Property Rental Service, as mentioned last month. Since then, it's been revealed that prices have risen considerably for rentals in Valencia this year, and the supply has dwindled amazingly. Up to 80% fewer places are available in some areas. Foreigners, though, have even less choice, as we said in the post. And therefore, we explain something. Here's a bit of the post. As a foreigner, you immediately have fewer options to rent, as we've written about many times before, because most owners will not accept someone they can't get insurance for in their property. The fear of illegal occupation is real, even if the reality is, well, it's largely fictitious. One of our jobs that we do well at Valencia Property with our rental service is to convince owners to accept you, our clients, as we work with the client before arriving to prove the ability to pay and that they are decent people. Also, we avoid situations where the owner asks you for 12 months upfront payment or ridiculous amounts of deposit to ensure getting your rental. We make sure that the owners are putting your deposit into the prop, which is where it has to go, so you're protected against the owner not returning your deposit. However, we can't always convince owners to rent to foreigners, and we cannot therefore get all of the properties on the market available for you. We try and we get more success than most others, but we can never be 100%. Anyway, you can read more about that post at the link in the show notes. Last month's podcast was about the market and how it's going with the market report, and we put more flesh on the bones in our second blog post of the month. We also asked about why there is so much demand. Well, we asked our clients what brings them to Valencia. And the reasons are largely lifestyle related, but with the Americans, there's a huge elephant in the room. Safety. One of the main reasons Americans are buying in Valencia is because they believe their country has taken a wrong turn, especially with the orange, uh, shall we call him, shit gibbon, and the fear that he could return. And then the maggots will be emboldened even more. And that fear is real. Also, the fear of being in the wrong place at the wrong time and becoming another statistic in the huge number of gun deaths is also real. Protecting their family from this is paramount in the minds of our clients. This is a push factor though, pushing them away from the states. Pull factors that are creating this strong demand for living in Valencia, according to our clients, are lifestyle, affordability, climate, culture, social factors, family, location and community. Again, you can read more from that post in the show notes. We then narrowed down the subject in our next two posts. In the first, we talked about Cafe Society in Laliana, one of the most popular suburbs of Valencia, another subject we have tackled on the blog recently. We've talked about the suburbs. We looked at the best coffee places to hang out in Laliana and bemoaned the real lack of online presence of most of these places. One, though, does have a decent website, and we talked about it. The image that illustrates the main photo for the piece was taken from the Café Thanto in Leliana. The sloth was placed onto my coffee the first time I visited. Not sure if it was a comment on my appearance, movement or whatever. But Café Thanto import their own green coffee beans from small producers in Costa Rica, where one of the owners, Wendy, is from. Her experience is matched by her Italian business partner, Vincenzo. They roast their own beans here and you can buy their roasted beans too for home use. Anecdotally, I believe they can place any image on the froth of your coffee if you like, and they have excellent air conditioning inside, along with a nice terrace outside, which is often in the shade in the mornings and early afternoons in the summer. You can choose the strength of the coffee you want, and obviously have any of the above types of coffee you want, plus a few more esoteric options. Again, 
You can read more about the Cafe Society in Liliana in the blog post. Our next post talked about our new obsession, and that's Cullera, one of the Valencia beach towns that we've mentioned before on the blog, but now we're really, really getting to like. After spending a weekend down there watching dragon boat racing, we looked at why Cullera is becoming more and more popular for clients looking to buy beachside or near beach property at a decent price. We don't generally talk about tourist attractions as such in this blog because we're not, we're not a tourism blog. Obviously, we're more about living in a place or having property in a place. But in the case of Cuyera, we'll make an exception, as when you live there, you'll obviously take your visitors to the local attractions. So a visit to the cave of the pirate Dragut, a walk around the lagoon, the Estani, a visit to the modernist-style market constructed between 1896 and 1900 with its underground Civil War bomb shelters, constructed somewhat later, a walk up to the Santuario de la Señora de la Encarnación, and to take in Cullera Castle while up there, and obviously going up to the Albufera for a boat trip on the lake, are the biggies, the things you do around Cullera. And that's without mentioning spending time on the beach and the promenade and sampling the seafood in the plentiful cafes and restaurants offering views over the sand. We think you'll agree that Cullera has a lot going for it, and it's a great destination for your seaside property near enough to the city in order to enjoy what Valencia offers too, but far enough away to feel you're on holiday when you go down there. And finally, last month, we looked at how to choose investment property to rent out in Valencia, as we're getting so many requests for this. What can you expect to find, what areas we recommend, and what prices you should expect to pay currently, along with what sort of returns you can expect. We also put in a call to altruism in the article, and we'll see whether anyone takes us up on this. And we answered the question about where it should be. Literally anywhere. Well, that's not quite the answer. It's not really. It's close to that, but not exact. The city guarantees you a rental, of course, because everything that comes up to rent gets rented. But it might not give you the best return or even the best tenants. People move on more quickly in the city, and if you're looking for long-term rentals, then you might find that you need to regularly find new tenants. Any tenant can leave a rental contract after six months without penalty. And this is a good thing. Due to the new rental contracts in place in the last couple of years, this has benefited tenants. Prior to that, tenants were punished for leaving a contract early, even when it was through no fault of their own, work placements, loss of work, family commitments, etc. The city is still a good option, and the areas around the city are also good, but bear in mind the following and it will be easier. Transport connections, metro or bus. Larger populations of the town, 15 to 30,000 rather than small villages. A good building near to facilities in the town, such as supermarkets, shops, cafes, etc. Universities nearby, and most importantly, make the place attractive. If you do all that, you'll get a good tenant. So moving on to our projects at the moment, Stepping Stone Rentals. Well, Stepping Stone Rentals is moving forward with more properties available and more requests for medium term rentals from people looking to relocate to Valencia and get their first stepping stone towards a more permanent move. We now have a constantly changing availability of properties as previously rented out places come back onto the market and new places appear. Keep an eye on the website this week as we upload even more. Our Dutch site is starting to work very well with more visits, more contacts and the first clients taking steps to secure their dream Valencian home with their chosen number of slack cameras. Slack cameras is one of the few things I do know in Dutch. We get a lot of Dutch listeners, so if you are listening to this in the Netherlands, bear in mind that Maria will now be talking to you in your own language when you come here to purchase. Except... At the moment she won't, because she underwent a little operation this week and she'll be out for about 10 days, so get well soon, Maria. For the main bit of the podcast this week, we thought we'd look at what do Valencians leave when they sell a house. We have a little part of the pod here about what is often left behind when you buy a house in Valencia. We often search houses for treasures, but usually find, well, a lot of junk. Now and again we find nothing because the client has left the house empty due to being asked to do so by the buyer but that's rare. However, don't be surprised when everything is left. And today we have a little anecdote about this and the dangers of not wanting to pay to move everything out. We were selling a place outside of the city and our client, the buyer, was bringing all of their own furniture from the United States, so asked for the house to be left empty. The owners wanted to take some things to give to the family, but there would be a lot left over, so they called in a local chaterero. Now, a chaterero is somebody who advertises that they do house clearances. And that's a very loose term, advertising. They usually have a van with their number on and the words, we do house clearances. 
Anyway, this chatarero brought along a few mates to help out with the heavy lifting. And there was a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of marble tables which had to go. They got there before the family with just the owner, who instructed them and decided to come back later. They decided meantime they were going to take everything, even the stuff marked specifically for the family. And also, they'd help themselves first to the drinks cabinet, which involved quite a lot of whiskey and vodka. As you can imagine, things got a bit leery and agitated, and to cut a long story short, when the seller arrived, he was threatened with a knife for extra payment. The agreement was that they could keep everything if they moved everything out. He was still extremely shook up when we found out about it in the notary two days later, because the seller was nothing to do with us, so we didn't know he was doing this. Long story short, and the moral of this of course is, pay for a reputable company to move stuff, rather than getting the local white van guy, unless like us, you know a few local white van guys and know they can be trusted even if one of them does look like super hands from Peep Show, and if you don't know that, the secret ingredient is crime. Secondly, people have been asking us which podcasts and articles from this year are the most important to listen to and read. Well, this week on the blog, we looked at some of the blog posts that answer the most typical questions we get. But anyway, here we're going to give you three suggestions for podcasts and five blog posts you should read in order to have a great understanding of what's happening in Valencia currently. Of course, as usual, all of the links will be in the show notes so you can find things easily. Regarding podcasts, you should be listening to Season 2, Episode numbers 16, all about the Autumn Market Report, Episode 12, about the rental crisis in Valencia, and Episode 11, about working as a realtor in Valencia and what we can do for you. In terms of articles, then the most important recently have been the generalist ones, such as the Market Report in Numbers, The Best of the Valencia Suburbs, Work-Life Balance in Valencia, the Valencia Property Network Guide, and the top Spanish property scams and how to avoid them. The links are in the show notes. Remember, you can take a look. We've been asked a few other questions this month that I thought would be interesting to answer on the podcast. So let's take a look. John asked, what prompted you to write that Facebook post about experts in Facebook groups? Okay, so it was inspired by having to see certain new agents in the area answering people's questions, and I say that in heavy inverted commas, claiming up to 30 years experience in the market when they have actually lived in Spain for under a year and never actually answering the question asked. They always say, just DM me, just send me a message. If you know the answer, then answer the question in public, thus proving your knowledge. The person asking the question can decide themselves whether to follow up with you. They don't need the hard sell. And for those who take them up on their offer, well, good luck with that, because these people claiming 30 years, they don't really know that much. Diana asked about changing utility bills over after a purchase. Do we do that? Yes, we do. You don't need to do anything. We use a service called Paperness to change over utility bills except water, and we do the water change ourselves. You'll need to give us your bank account details in order to direct debit future payments into that account, and you may need to answer a phone call to confirm any new contracts for electric, for example. But listening to one of my colleagues put on a voice and confirm everything for someone last week must have been hilarious. They had to do a female voice, and Dave isn't actually a female. Unfortunately, I wasn't there in order to listen to this hilarity. Miguel asked us whether we can act as a full-service, short-term rental company on the soon-to-be-purchased apartment in Valencia, and the answer is no. We don't do short-term rentals. There are much better companies out there specializing in this type of rental, and we can recommend people we know who do this if, and this is a big if, you get a license. Because Miguel, you might not get a license. From what you described to me, I don't think you will. It was a second floor apartment, if I remember rightly. We do act for medium-term rentals through our Stepping Stones rental service, of course, and yes, we have a full service for this. I had a phone call and I can't remember the name, so sorry if it was you, but I was thanked for all of the information on the blog and more specifically the podcast, but they had used another agency for their purchase. When I asked why they hadn't used us as a point of interest, they said it was because they hadn't realised they could use us because they didn't understand the concept of a buyer's agent as it's called something else in their country. Apparently, we hadn't made it clear enough. So just in case you don't know, yes, we act for you, the buyer, on your purchase in Valencia. You can also call it your personal property shopper, your realtor, or even your representative here. The most important thing, though, 
is that you know to get in touch with us first, even if you've seen a property you're interested in elsewhere, because we might know quite a lot about that property. Now, there's no recommendations this month because there's plenty of reading and listening material in the show notes already. So, until next month, this is Graham from the Valencia Property Podcast saying bye for now. You can contact us for inf- uh, for more information on information at valencia-property.com and we look forward to hearing from you. And remember, you can also find me on WhatsApp. It's on the blog. Get in touch. Let's work together. Let's find you your house in Valencia. <laughs>